Yeah. If you haven't guessed yet, we are recording this one. I, even my tones probably just changed right now. I'm like, oh yes, don't worry, we won't be, we won't have to do anything different when we're recording. But even after I hit the record button, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's so, a little change, but it matters a lot. But whatever, <laughs> to the to the grain of today. Yeah, sweet. So for it's, anyone who's joined just now, it's essentially we're going to be dissecting, or uh, dissecting various subject matter, uh, various bits of subject matter, in uh, the context of quant and algorithmic trading, specifically yeah. towards research and development, but not only covering the implementation side of things as people are most familiar with but also going into the the underlying the process the journey the sort of individualism as well as team effort required in certain parts of projects it's important to touch upon in a fair bit of detail the fundamentals that go into quant r d and then scale those out to actual quant r d so this whole series of talk uh, talks that we're going to do is going to involve both because they're both fundamental to the process. Would you agree? Totally. I really think it's it's basic to to final uh, be able to generalize and, and transmit your your knowledge to to the financial strategies that you finally will will get to 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 do because that's that's where we all want to be. I mean, we we need to create strategies. But for that, I think that uh, it's really important to go to the fundamentals, to go to the pillars, to really yeah. understand. But from a different perspective not only about thinking of the scientific method but also questioning about the scientific methods that Precisely. are there i couldn't agree and, more yeah and and really going well go, going back to even the, the the simplest hypothesis that you that you are talking to and how do you see things because at the end of the day we we could start here saying that we, we believe that markets are systems so mm. that's that's a huge um, uh, initial perspective of what we see a market is because that's that's something totally out of financial knowledge that it's totally out of any econometrics it's just uh, trying to define what we are going to approach so can you please elaborate a little bit more on that Ali so that we can get a grasp on, on that and elaborate into that idea what is a system even what uh what makes it a system what does a system behave so in terms of markets i think this is a this is a great place to start this conversation because what i find amongst um you know traders or friends even is this perception of the market as this mysterious sort of um, magical phenomenon that is we all strive to predict day in day out using any means and every means available to us when it's really just a at its bare bones it's a system of various participants at various different levels of capitalization employing various different levels of infrastructure in this competitive environment so it, it comes to mind two things. One is uh, that's uh, obviously there is an interaction in tr between those participants. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a very complex interaction between all of them, which is what makes prediction or, or forecasting the markets that complex at the end of the day. Yeah. But we will be talking about that uh, um, more into the future. But another thing that I will want to say, it's everyone wants to win. So it's <laughs> it's... It's also very interesting to understand that if everybody wants to win, everybody will be putting all their efforts to win. So there is no two different mindsets in the markets. So for example, just, so for somebody who's joined the conversation just now, uh, what would be an example of that? Just to shed some light on it in a practical context. Yeah, for example, it's, let's, let's put it onto the algorithmic trading framework because it's, uh -huh. it's not only a thing about, about uh, human beings doing, going to push enter to, to enter a, an order. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about, for example, let's, let's see that um, at some point in time you are keen on to believe that the past is really important for the future. Mm -hmm. That's one. That's a bias that you actually, or we actually have, because other complex systems that we really see on onto nature uh, kind of have some, let's say, clear pattern or clear or or let's say a static. Which is it's easy to be conditioned set. mentally to think that way. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, and we have to think about predictors, not only about 
pass because at the end of the day, we kind of can uh, simplify the equation about RT plus one, it's equal to RT plus E. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are T, it's there. So we have something from the past that can, let's say, accomplish something. We will talk on, on to, to much more complex things in the following sessions. But uh, I, I want just to mention about that E, that we need to, that we have the past there. So the idiosyncratic think, component. Yeah, that's a, a huge bias. Not only that, but we have uh, look ahead bias, we have survivorship bias, we have a lot of other whole bunch of things mm -hmm. that it is really easy to not be able to spot them. Mm 